The officials Mike Wood, Carl Haas, Larry Rose were all set. Duke and NC State. The Blue Devils come in with a record of 23 and 6. The Wolfpack 18 and 11. Herb Sendak just about locked up a bid to the NCAA tournament with his wins over Georgia Tech and Wake Forest here at the tournament. But Mike Krzyzewski is used to championship games. His teams have won the tournament in the ACC seven times. He's won three national titles, been to the Final Four 13 times. NC State has it first. Here's Powell. Interesting matchups out there for Duke. Ewing knocks it out of bounds. 18 on the shot clock. State ball. Mike, how important is it for the Wolfpack to get off to a quick start? Well, you know, I think they're playing with a high level of confidence, so that may not be that necessary. You know, if, if they stumble a little bit at first, uh, you know, I think they're going to be able to regain it quickly. But you look at, you got Chris Duhon on Julius Hodge. Oh, a couple of near turnovers early in this game, so some shaky passing by North Carolina State. Here's Powell down low. Into the paint, he goes with a power move, and he walks. Turnover number one for NC State. Uh, and, and you know what's what's been nice for NC State offensively they've had the inside out game Josh Powell has played very very well in this tournament Tim, and that's opened some things up out of the perimeter but he just took an extra step on that power move Duhon drifts right Redick in the corner Ewing's had the hot hand 51 points in two games back to Redick left alone this is for three but Crawford got turned around and uh, lost track of J.J. Redick, and that's going to be a key matchup for NC State defensively. Williams knocks Hodge shot out of bounds. Sheldon Williams, although a freshman, third in the conference in blocks at one and a half per, taking the challenge right there. Julius Hodge didn't get to elevate using that left hand. Cheryl, halfway down, came back out. Tim, let's keep an eye on the shooting percentage for NC State. Third game in three days. The legs tend to go, and when that happens, the field goal percentage drops. Jones with a follow. Duke's on the board, and it's Ewing. And NC State can't sustain that. They are last in the ACC in rebounds, but they've got to clean up misses. Duke, three opportunities at the basket that time. Another key today will be bench scoring, where Duke gets terrific bench scoring. 27 games, average 28 points, and... NC State does not have that kind of bench story. NC State ball here with 22 on the shot clock. The State only averages 11 off the bench. You know, you, know, you talk about the bench, Tim, and uh, Levi Watkins really the only guy who sees minutes. And in the first two games, out of 400 possible minutes, the bench played 50. So, you know, the, these, these starters are being called on to do a lot. Cheryl, good penetration, gets the bounce. We're tied at two. No player on this Duke roster has ever played in a losing ACC tournament game. Folks, that will give you confidence. You know, Tim, conversely, there are six freshmen who've never played in a championship game. So, you know, it's a little misleading on that stat. This is all new for them. Crawford gets the turnover, pulls up for the jumper. Yes! Cliff Crawford had a career game against Duke at NC State. 21 points to help him uh, look back in a victory. You talked about turnovers and how that can play and the outcome of this game certainly has in the first two here. Again, I said in Raleigh when I was there to do the NC State Duke game, the State protected the ball very well. Ten on the shot clock. Duhon asked for a pick. Oh, how about the pass to Williams? Unbelievable. Pick and roll. And that's a, that is a great pass right between the two defenders to Williams. He did a nice job of identifying that, slipping the screen. Powell almost throws it away. Dangerous pass. Here comes Crawford. Picks it back out to Hodge. This is for three. And the foul is on Crawford. His first. This is just very simple basketball right here. You'll see a little screen roll action come up here, off, and then just slip right down. Look how spread the floor is. There's no defensive help right there. You've got a little movement across the baseline, and that clears everybody out. Sheldon Williams wide open. Talk about a pick and roll. That's textbook. You see the early shooting situation. They kick it back out to Jones. Shot clock at 
15. Belvin with the rebound. Now the butterflies are gone. Hyperventilating's over. Yeah, just get into the flow of the game. It usually takes the, about the first TV timeout to get through that. Everybody gets a chance to get a break a little bit of a sweat and then go over and regroup. Turnover number two as Melvin throws it away. AC Sanders, the 6'11, 235 pound senior out of Tampa, Florida, comes into the ball game and Williams goes out. When I look for Duke and uh, Sheldon Williams is going to go over and uh, looks like they're going to try to loosen his back up. He may be having some spasms, but uh, Duke may be a little liberal with their uh, substitutions early on. Reddick not even close with his three. Crawford did a nice job of fighting over the screen to get a hand up on that shot. A little stop and go by Crawford carried it. Fifteen fifty-seven to play. We're tied at four. Duke and NC State. And having a little back trouble right there, trying to get those spasms worked out. Daniel Ewing's performance, and I agree with you, he's got to be the leader right now for MVP. But a little bit of a surprise. He averages twelve points, three rebounds. Started only twelve games throughout the year. He's come in. He's been dominant in this tournament. Well, and that's the decision that NC State had to make. Cliff Crawford is their best defender, and right now he's guarding JJ Redick. That leaves Ewing with Cheryl, who is not quite the same defensive force, but when you've got those two guys on the floor together, it makes it tough to make a decision. Reddick got away with the carry. Here's Jones on the baseline. Up top to Ewing. With one on the shot clock, he turns and fires and hits a three. You know, when it's going your way, wow. plays like that happen, Tim. And it, he looked down at the opposite shot clock to see how much time was left, turned and fired. Incredible. Seven to four, Duke taken away by Jones. Nine to four, Duke. And those are the type of turnovers that really hurts NC State. When they happen out near half court, there's no way the defense can get back. Four turnovers in the game for North Carolina State in the first five minutes. But those last two plays could be devastating. The three by Ewing and the slam by Jones. Duke beat State last year in the championship game, 91 to 61. State says they want to avoid that this year, obviously. Here's the putback by Powell, and he's fouled and won. Well, this is what penetration does, and Julius Hodge should get an assist on that play by being aggressive and going to the basket. He drew Casey Sanders over, which allowed Josh Powell a free run right to the front of the rim. Somebody's got to step up and take a body off and take somebody up for the center. You know, he's coming out to help you. You've got to slide in and cover that board. Chris Duhon, the captain of this Duke team, picked up the first, picked up the personal foul. That's his first. Powell has played very well uh, against Duke as you see the numbers right there as a matter of fact 14 points on six of six shooting at Cameron Indoor Stadium and uh, I really like his future I think he's going to be a fine center in this league. How about State's free throw shooting over the last seven games 83 percent yesterday 29 of 35 from the line. And that's one thing that, that Duke was very concerned about Tim. they want to put pressure on them and challenge shots but they want to keep State off the free throw line for that very reason you don't want to get them easy baskets. State needs to stop, though. Duke has scored its last two possessions. Duhon drifts and throws it away. Cheryl's got the breakaway. And Cheryl is fouled by Ewing. And Ewing walks away hobbled. Coming down a little awkwardly on that play, but again, a similar turnover, except this time by NC State. Cheryl was the first one to the basketball, and uh, Ewing trying to make the block on it just came down a little awkwardly on that left foot. Mike, if NC State's going to win today, they're going to have to continue to be strong at the line. I don't think there's any question about it. And, you know, when you get on a run like this and you have confidence at the free throw line, there is a carryover effect. See his numbers, and it would be a huge boost for NC State today if Scooter Cheryl stepped up and had a big offensive night. Well, he's got four points now. He averages 10 points. <laughs> 14 minutes to play in the first half of the championship game. Duon had a notion. Jones, this is for two. Went right through the hands of Horvath. 
goes into Melvin. And knocked out of bounds by Sanders. Nice job of Casey Sanders fighting over the top and made it a tough entry pass for Julius Hodge. Also number 23. Sheldon Williams comes back into the game and Horvath goes out. It was Melvin who got NC State off to a quick start yesterday. Here he is. This is for three. Melvin trying to get into the flow offensively, but a good job, Sheldon Williams, getting out and getting a hand up. Back to Sanders. Crowd thought there was a walk in the paint. Here's Duhon for three. Duke has taken two wild shots in their last two possessions. How about that shot by Hodge? And that's the result, Tim. You know, when you take an unexpected shot like that, it catches your other players off guard and it makes it, it gives it an advantage to NC State to get out in transition. Julius Hodge first bucket. Williams gets it back. We're tied again. You look at you look at Duke and they've had such good luck going to Williams inside. Punish NC State down low and he gets the offensive foul on that play. It's on Powell. We talked about MVP candidates and Julius Hodge certainly is one in this tournament. Very aggressive going to the basket. Little scoop shot right there. Tricky high off the glass. So we're tied at 11. Herb Sendek didn't like that last call. He thought it was a flop. Didn't want the offensive call. Here's Jones. Big rebound by Powell. Uh, Duke is much better when they get a few passes in the offense for a shot. They've been uh, real quick with the trigger over the last two or three possessions. Crowd wanted Sanders over the back. Now they get a foul call. The mock chair, boy, he's lucky. They've got 23 of their best, 23,000 of their best friends telling them how to do their job in this game. And, and, and in this arena, at the ACC, they are passionate. Closed captioning for ACC basketball provided by RBC Centura. Building a better bank, one customer at a time. Shell ah! shot is blocked by Sanders. Casey Sanders three blocks against North Carolina cleaning things up inside Duke averages about five blocks a game Out to Duhon Back to Jones good defense by State Reddick on the baseline Knocked out of bounds by Levi Watkins 12 on the shot clock Great start to a championship game tied at 11 with 11 and a half to play in the first half with him coming back next year it's two ACLs that they've had in two years Levi Watkins the previous year blew his knee out I agree with you and they say the rehab has gone quite well and there's a five second call that did not go well for Duke but it was strong defense by NC State well three freshmen on the floor including the guy taking it out of bounds and Duke University did not react well in that situation nobody made themselves available as an outlet on the under out of bounds Crawford's been quiet so far for State here he is down low got a good pass but gets tied up and he was fouled Said Sean Dockery grabbed him, grabbed him, and he's called for the personal. Well, you can see early on that uh, Mike Krzyzewski has been much more liberal with the use of his bench, running some bodies in there, and uh, NC State only two players off the bench for a limited time in this game. This foul called on Ewing, and that's two. So Daniel Ewing, the sensational sophomore, picks up two personals quickly. And that's a nice decision by Julius Hyde. Let's see if he tries to go at him again. He's out of his shoe. Came right out of his shoe. Ewing takes it away and scores at the other end. All right, now with some players, Marcus Melvin coming to the rescue here with the with the sneaker. Well, they can't they can't stop the game by rule. No, I can't believe that uh, Julius Hodge tried to run after him in that play. He could have gotten hurt. Valiant effort with one shoe on. He 
Usually you fake the other guy out of his shoes. He's faked himself out. Melvin. That's for three. Marcus Melvin. He got him quickly out of the gate yesterday. He got a nice little screen at the top of the key. Duke did not react well. He got an open look. Boy, if he gets going, it really helps NC State. He had 23 points yesterday. Here's Dockery. Sanders. Good pump fake by Reddick. Running back. You know, and I think even though he scores, that's a good option for NC State. You don't want to get J.J. Reddick going from the outside, so make him shoot a two-point basket instead of getting locked in from three. They're going to call this foul on Casey Sanders for the hold. That's his first, but Duke getting into some foul trouble here. And but, it's Mike Krzyzewski off the bench. Well, and there's the foul right there. You can see it. Uh, Sanders getting the elbows up, kind of locking Marcus Melvin up. And that's a tough cover for him. Dante Jones now back in the game. And uh, Hodge, Crawford, Melvin backs it in. Marcus Melvin showing all of his weapons in this game, going outside for the jump shot and then working in the interior. Nice post move that time. Good power move. It's going to be called on Levi Watkins. You know, you talk about Melvin. When he gets off like this, he had 23 yesterday. It makes him a different ball club. They're much tougher. No, no question about it, Kevin. And the thing with uh, with him that you have to worry about is fatigue, maybe more than the other players, because he plays the point in the press. He's asked to do a lot of things out on the perimeter. And as he wears down, his scoring goes down. So Melvin goes out. Powell comes in. Melvin sits down with five points and four rebounds. Levi Watkins on the hold that time. Referees calling this game very closely. That's uh, two fouls on Watkins in a matter of 10 seconds. Well, you know, there's some current concern uh, coming in in the game over at, uh, at Duke. Julius Hodge got a technical. Dante Jones got a fat lip in an interchange between those two. Sanders misses the, the layup. And he double dribble. Uh, Casey Sanders not very polished inside and once he missed that first opportunity NC State had time to swarm around him and force the turnover. Now let's see how State responds with a one point lead. Really close with a nice call Dante Jones all over Julius Hodge on that play. And the crowd doesn't like Jones going up and trying to get an explanation from Larry Rose. Mike Wood, Carl Hass, Larry Rose, the officials. Mike continues to talk to Larry. Well, here's the thing, Tim, and this is an issue you talked about already, the 17th foul. So now NC State, the best free throw shooting team in the league, is in the bonus situation for the last 10 minutes of this half. Hodge makes the first. Tim Brandt, Mike Jaminski, the Greensboro Coliseum, Greensboro, North Carolina, for the 50th annual ACC Tournament Championship. 23,000 fans are here. Hodge misses the second. 9.25 to play in the first half. State by two. Duhon for three. Again, Duke has not been successful when they've had early jump shots, uh, no movement in the offense. Hodge throws up a brick. State loses it out of bounds. Mike, how about the officiating in the championship game? I mean, one of those situations, I don't mean these three, but any championship game, you want to let it play a little bit? Well, or should you call it close? Because in a championship game with that intensity could get out of hand. You know, Tim, whatever it is, the only thing that I, I as a player wanted was consistency. You know, and, and you adapt to it. You, you usually the referees will set the tone in the first four minutes of the game, and then you adapt and you play accordingly. Well, you've got three of the most consistent here today, and that's why they're doing the championship game. And Mike Woods, Carl Hassan, and Larry Rose. Here's Crawford. And that's for three. So much of NC State's offense is penetration and kicks. That time the defense compressed Cliff Crawford. Nobody in the same area code. 
NC State with its largest lead up to five. Jones off balance. Reddick for three. And Hodge has it. Ahead to Crawford. And knocked out of bounds by Duhon. Great hustle by Duhon to stop the Snowbird. Watch this, Julius Hodge with the basketball is going to go all the way inside. Crawford here is going to be wide open as this play unfolds. He's like five white jerseys inside, nobody around. Cliff Crawford, and when he gets his feet set, in a very, very good three-point shooter. Crawford, and no, missed the layup. Sometimes you can be too open inside. I think he was shocked at that. He won't get many of those. Taken away by Crawford. Two on one. Cheryl. Yeah, I talked about the fact that Cliff Crawford and all ACC defensive players. Sheldon Williams has to identify where he is before he puts the ball on the floor. Good steal and turnover by NC State. Seven point lead for the Wolfpack. Uh, good penetration by Jones, and he's fouled. Foul's going to be on Marcus Melvin, and that'll be his first. Wolfpack fans are loving this in the Greensboro Coliseum. 7:39 to play. North Carolina State ahead by seven, and they're doing it defensively. I talked about Sheldon Williams. You have to understand where the help is coming from. Cliff Crawford coming down, finishing off the break is Scooter Sherrill. He leads NC State with six points. Tim, right now, uh, we, you know, we talked about the defense. Duke, 7 of 20 in the game, 35%. They've turned it over five times, so NC State is matching them in that category. Mike, one thing you can say about Herb Sendak is the fact that the man has proven himself in tournaments. I mean, this is his seventh year at State, his third trip to the ACC championship game. Well, you know, it's, it's shocking to me is, you know, for some of the Wolfpack fans, it, it never seems like he's proven himself, and he's done a terrific job sure there. Has. Finds himself in the finals of the ACC tournament for two years in a row, and it seems like uh, he's another guy like like Matt Doherty. It's a, it's a one-game referendum for him. See if Duke can break the drought. Reddick. Ten on the shot clock. This is too hot for three. Splash. Well, you have to choose something. NC State is going to stay at home and with Ewing and Reddick there. I think they'll live with Chris Duhon taking shots from behind the arc, 25% on the year, but he comes up big there. Four point NC State lead. State wanted to play this thing in increments. Uh, Duke, Five minute increments. Yeah, Duke in one of the rare times to see them in the zone and see how NC State reacts to it. Bethman's gotten a lot of minutes. Here's Melvin inside. And but Bethman in, this play. in this tournament's getting more minutes than he got all year. Well, and uh, as the season wore on, uh, as Herb Sindek gained more confidence in the freshman and uh, played very, very well over the last 13 or 14. Jones for three. Yes. And he's a guy like Josh Howard, who from last year to this year really improved his outside shooting, and that's what's made him an all-league player. His 38th tray of the year. Levi Watkins from beyond the arc. Hodge with the rebound. The thing in the zone, much more difficult to defensive rebound. You can rebound an area, and uh, Hodge able to sneak in behind Sheldon Williams for the recycle. Smart play by Hodge to bring it back and reset. Betterman for two. Now an assist and a basket in consecutive possessions that really can give you a lot of confidence for your first ACC tournament final. That will give the coach a lot of confidence to put you back in for those minutes at the end, too. Here's Reddick. And he drops a three on him. He has five points, and it's a two-point game. All of a sudden now Duke heating up from behind the arc. They've hit three three-pointers in their last five possessions. Blue Devils struggled beyond the arc when NC State beat him in Raleigh. Inside the better again. Cheryl 
And that's for three. What an exhibition we're getting now, Mike. Uh, NC State may be shooting Duke out of this zone in a hurry. This is for way outside. Are you kidding me? Duan was almost at. He was sitting over there with Sunday. He was over in Winston Salem when he took that shot. <laughs> Melvin goes into the paint, takes it back out. Levi Watkins. Here's Benjamin with a rebound. Jones. Possession arrow belongs to Duke. So the Blue Devils will retain possession. 3.58 to play in the first half. 29-24. Back in the 1950s when seven schools played two hundred dollars a piece to start this conference I don't think they had any clue that it would get this big or this successful Well, and Tim, the first tournaments were played at Reynolds Coliseum and I had a chance to talk with Demi Dickie Hamrick this week uh, who went to Wake Forest played in that first championship game I asked him what kind of advantage that was and he kind of rolled his eyes and <laughs> he said Everett Case thought it was worth about eight or ten points to NC State at that time and you look around this building here a lot of red jerseys and as the uh, other teams go out of the tournament you get the other people coming in and buying it and this feels like the RBC Center for uh, for some reason this game so I think state's got a nice home court advantage in this game Duke basketball 29 on the shot clock so far no bench points for Duke. They averaged 20 points a game off the bench. Betterman came in. He's been a surprise off the bench for State. Well, you know, I don't know it's necessary for them to get point production. I think they just need to wear down NC State from that standpoint, Tim. Halfway down, comes back out, and Hodge ends up with it. State's got some numbers. And double dribble by Hodge. He lost the handle. I think Julius Hodge trying to do too much on that possession really didn't have any friends running with him on the break four white jerseys around him. Somebody was bound to get a hand on the dribble. Mike, you talked about turnovers in the beginning, and that's seven turnovers now for the Wolfpack. Yeah, you know, and, it's, but I, and I differentiate too. If that's a turnover. At least they get to go back and, and set up and get them defensively. It's when they make turnovers in the offense out front that turn into points for Duke. The foul on Powell is his second. A look at the tournament titles won by an outstanding group of ACC coaches, and it's presented by Toyota. Coach Smith still the gold standard. Uh, won one of those at my expense in 1979. Mike is sitting right in second. He's won it seven times, and of course Mike though has been to the NCAA Final Four 13 times and has three national championships. That's an impressive list. Ewing goes out of the game. Levi Watkins comes in for NC State. I'm a little surprised that, uh, that Coach Smith wasn't around this weekend. He might have been here. I didn't, you know, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to see him, but he's such a huge part of the history of this conference. Do you read anything into that? No. <laughs> Just check it. Looking for a little tabloid journalism here early in the broadcast. Here's Crawford. Nice dish to Hodge. Reddick beyond the arc. Yep. Oh, halfway down and comes back up. Right, they are just people are flying at Reddick when he squares up to take the shot. And the foul is called on Dockery. Hodge gives him a look like finally you call it. A lot of emotion. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. The 1954 All-Tournament team. How about this? Dickie Hemrick, Gene Shue, Mel Thompson, Ronnie Shadlick, and Skippy Winstead. 
Marty Shavlik's grandson now playing in the uh, tournament final. Although Shavlik uh, Randolph won't play today, probably still has the high ankle sprain. What NC State has done at the line at the end of the season is incredible. One shot. Hodge in the last eight games from the line, 91 percent. Well, and that's what happens. You, you, you want to talk about how a player raises his scoring average. You get to the free throw line eight to ten, ten times a game, and you shoot at 90 percent. I mean, that's nine free points right there. All you have to do is find five other baskets, and you're right near 20. Penetration by Duhon. High on the glass, banks it in, and one. He's fouled. I think it's a good decision by Chris Duhon. His jump shot has not been there. He's knocked down a three in this game, but he sees an opportunity to go right to the rim. And how about finishing with the left hand on contact? That's a tough play right there. But uh, Duhon at just under 200 pounds, Tim, I think a lot stronger than people give him credit for. So Hodge picks up the personal. Duhon finishes the three-point play. And it's 31-27 with 2.25 to play in the first half. Numbers weren't there, and Hodge threw a dangerous pass, and he waited too long. And Reddick, with great hustle, knocked it out of bounds. Well, that was a nice job of pursuit by J.J. Reddick, who didn't give up on the play, and uh, his hustle that time denied Cheryl a look at the three. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Reset. So as they reset the offense, shot clock at 18. Melvin beyond the arc. And Marcus Melvin reading who's defending him. When he's got a big player guarding him, he'll drift outside. When he's got a smaller cover, he'll try to go inside and work. Duhon working off the screen. Now the feed. Williams. His foul. Julius Hodge called for the foul on the play on the reach in. That's two quick ones, Mike, on Hodge. So it's a one on one situation now for Sheldon Williams. It was broadcast as a copyrighted presentation, and the use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson College Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. To look at it, you know, over the last half of the season, Sheldon Williams played very, very well for Duke. Numbers going up. He was third in the conference. I talked about it as a shot blocker. Ninth in rebounding at six per, and uh, only eight points. But you know that his scoring is going to go up. Always well, Duke's leading rebounder, and you're right. 11 points yesterday. He contributes in a lot of ways, and you're right. He gets better, and has gotten better down the stretch. And maybe more importantly, he gives Duke a, a physical presence inside that they probably haven't had since Elton Brand. He now has six points. He goes out. Horvath comes in. Duke has closed the gap to two points. State are going some long scoring droughts. They've done it all season. Duke again, you know, the, the press, you want to try to get the steal, but it's again to make State use a lot of energy, and uh, that may pay dividends later in this game. All right, here we go. Shot clock at 10. Belford's got to go. Shot clock at five. Melvin gets it off and hits a three with nothing left. The junior making big time plays. Duke's calling a 20, 30 second timeout. But boy, did Marcus Melvin bail them out on that play. It's him the most important thing. He didn't rush his shot, he just beat the buzzer. That's the thing. A lot of times players get in a hurry and he shot his normal shot and he'll take the consequences and he knocked it down. Let's look at Marcus Melvin, the only double figure scorer in the ball game with 10 points now. He's been working inside, knocking it down from the perimeter. Doing a terrific job for NC State. Also five rebounds, tying Hodge for team high honors. So Crawford, Cheryl, Hodge, Powell, Melvin all contributing for NC State here in the first half. And Betterman has come in and give him some quality minutes off the bench. I, I've been very impressed 
with Cameron Betterman three assists two points some nice defensive work as well. The Blue Devils on a 14 game ACC tournament win streak. Trying to win the title. Duhan. To Reddick. Reddick walked. Sixth turnover for the Blue Devils. Seconds to play in the first half. Shell at the foul line. Hits for two. He has 11 points. Big first half. Well, and he is very much a confidence player. You know, when he gets going early, his game really expands, and he got off quickly. Four of six from the field. Shot clock is off. Duhan. Waiting for the 10 second mark. 12, 11, 10. Now Duhan will go. And a whistle away from the ball. This is going to be on Betterman. Oh, you've got to be kidding me with six seconds left. Not a smart foul by Betterman. No, he got caught up and uh, trying to chase JJ Reddick down coming off a screen. Put a 92% free throw shooter at the line with six seconds to go. And Tim, how about uh, Duke? We saw yesterday maybe one of their best first halves, certainly offensively, this year at 54 points. They've only got 29 here in the first 20 minutes against NC State. Reddick drains the first one. Well, Daniel Ewing, you know, seven points. I mean, relative to what he's done in the tournament, not a bad half, but has had foul trouble. Two fouls and uh, limited time out on the floor. Cliff Crawford did a nice job defensively on him as well. Reddick, one of the highest scoring freshmen ever at Duke, along with Johnny Dawkins and Gene Banks, and of course, my partner, Mike Jaminski. Those are the four highest freshman scorers ever. <laughs> Well, teams from the triangle have won over 77% of the tournament titles. Duke has won four straight tournament titles and is only two behind North Carolina. The Wolfpack won the tournament in the first three years of the ACC that Mike talked about, but have not won a title since 1987. Eight different schools have won a tournament title. Clemson and Florida State are the only schools without a championship. You talk about that scoring list with the freshmen. I would have never been a part of that list if uh, Tate Armstrong doesn't get hurt that year. A good friend of mine who lives up in your neck of the woods sure. was having an outstanding season, broke his wrist, and that uh, put a lot more onus on uh, myself and Jimmy Spinarco to step up. You know, it's interesting when you look at those four freshmen. They're all different type players. I saw you talking to Gene Banks. I remember him playing high school ball in Philadelphia. All different type players. Oh, 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 oh. Four seconds left. This is good if it goes. And the first half ends. Well, we told you at the beginning of the broadcast, the last three days, we've learned to expect the unexpected. Maybe a growing up process for this team and learning how to play away from home. Power of the board and cannot get it to go down, but there's Cheryl. Well, Marcus Melvin had a notion to fire the three and now brings it back. Kyle's not going to get many. Looks closer than he had. Here's Kyle again with a putback. This goes in. He'll go to the line for one. Mike, what happened? Kyle was a monster in that, that possession. Tim, right now, NC State dominating Duke on the glass, 24 to 18. On the roll, set a little screen out top, and then he just out hustled Casey Sanders for inside position on the play. Good hustle by the big man. A little pumped up about that. Josh Powell, a 74% free throw shooter, had a couple of big tournament games 18.6 blocks, eight rebounds against Georgia Tech. And he now gives State a 45 38 lead. Nice cut by Ewing. 
Maybe should have taken the shot over past. It'll be Duke ball with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Sheldon Williams coming back in for Casey Sanders. And I think if you know Williams is, is in the ball game, you look to make that play. I think Ewing needed maybe be a little selfish in that instance and try to get a shot up on the glass. Jones loses the handle. Now he gets it back. Keep in mind, too, Powell's playing with three. Melvin's playing with three. Jones gets the rebound. Ball is still loose. Melvin comes up with it. State's running. Oh, Hodge lost the handle. Right, and just that little mishandle gives Duke the opportunity to get back and recover and transition. So the numbers right there, an extraordinary advantage inside. And there's Powell again with the power and goes to the line. 12 points for Josh Powell who's just become a monster in the last couple of minutes. And I like what NC State's doing. They see that they've got an advantage in there. They're trying to exploit him down low. Beautiful lob pass over the top by Marcus Melvin. State beat Georgia Tech 71-65 Friday, then after trailing by four at the half. Versus Wake Forest, they beat the Demon Deacons. Here they are in the title game and given Duke all they can handle. You, know, you, were, you were talking about Powell earlier in the, uh, in the game, wondering where he was, Tim. He only had one field goal attempt in the first half. Now he's got 10 points in the second half. They're using him down low. He's become a monster, Mike. 14-18 to play. State with its largest lead of the game. Duke needs a bucket badly. Jones. Hodge with the rebound, and the pack's running. Crawford to the hoop, and he's fouled. Duke needs a timeout. And they take one. I think the questions have been answered whether NC State has enough gas left in the tank. to play in the game. NC State by 12. Let's watch this. The level of the ball is right here. You've got four Duke defenders coming back. Cliff Crawford right here behind everybody will come around and beat everybody to the rim. Let's watch this unfold. That's just four defensive transition by Duke. They see it too late and it's a three-point play opportunity. And a good strong move. He's at the line. Clifford Crawford a reminder as all Wolfpack fans will tell you this is the 20th anniversary of state's run to the 1983 national title and state was a number four seed that year. Crawford just a 66 percent free throw shooter misses. Offensive foul, Sheldon Williams. Again, that's that's all brought about by Josh Powell. I mean, he is giving Sheldon Williams fits inside defensively, being very active. That is Sheldon Williams' fourth personal foul. And that's indicative of the battle they've been having because Powell has three, Williams has four. And here comes Casey Sanders into the game to replace him. Three pointers have been the key. Throughout this tournament for NC State. 10 trays Friday, 11 threes yesterday, 4 for 12 today. Tim Grant, Mike Jaminski with you. 23,000 fans enjoying this one. And Josh Powell walks. Right, right now, Tim, let's look at it. 13 uh, 38 left in the half, and Herb Sindek has not gone to his bench yet. The starter is still out there. It'll be interesting to see if anybody gets off for this five. State with the nine turnovers, only one in this half, so they've done a very good job of dealing with Duke's pressure. Here's Rennick working on Crawford, and Crawford is called for the foul. That's three on Crawford. He's still no bench points for Duke. Wow. Ewing halfway down comes back out. 
a lot of my putts. <laughs> Ewing only six field goal attempts in the game, Tim. Uh, NC State's done a good job keeping the ball out of his hands. Hobbs can't get the put back, and he's called for the personal. Julius Hodge shaking his head, a frustration play at that time. That's three on Hodge. Chris Duhon getting pushed underneath the basket on the offensive rebound try. State by 12, Ewing trying to close the gap. Sanders over the banks, did no call, and here comes Hodge, and he's fouled. Duhon on the, on the grab that time, and you could tell uh, maybe a, a little sense of urgency creeping in for Daniel Ewing, trying to lift the team on his back, trying to take the last two shots, but missing both. I've seen more intensity out of Duke, though, the last two trips. Really picked up the defense. Bottom line is Duke is picking up some foul trouble. Williams has four, Jones has three. And then for State, of course, we talked about Powell. Powell has three, Melvin has three, Hodge has three, and Crawford has three. You know what, Timmy, you look at Duke and, and their offense, it's really been a lot of one on one basketball. They're much better when they share the ball. They only have six assists in the game on 13 made field goal attempts. Sometimes as a, as a player, when your team is struggling, you try to take too much responsibility on your shoulders individually to make something happen rather than working through the offense. Mike, it's been a very clean game, though. The matchup with Hodge and Dante Jones was physical the last time they played. A fat lift for Jones, a technical foul for Hodge. This has been a clean game. No, no question about it. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the, the referees in the league sent messages to both teams uh, about that fact. But it's been a well-played final. And this game's been well officiated. You've got three of the best here. Here's Jones off balance, and again, Hodge comes away with it. So again, one on one basketball and a good defensive stand by Marcus Melvin. Sheriff pulls up for the two. Dude's got to get some points. His foul against Sheriff. Well, and, and Tim, you look at how they generate points normally during the regular season. They do it defensively and getting turnovers. They've really not gotten any easy baskets in this game. They've had to bang away at the half court defense of NC State and everything they've had to labor for. Julius Hodge now has four personal, so he joins the list and leads the game. One on one situation now for Duhon. Duke has, has not shot well throughout this whole game, and uh, you see two of 11 isn't going to do much for that percentage. Coach Sendak has to be wondering now if he's going to have enough guys to finish the game. Uh, we talked at the outset about a war of attrition over 40 minutes and, and, and what form that would manifest itself with NC State, whether fatigue or, or now it looks like a foul situation. NC State has a 12 point cushion to play with. See if they can melt the clock, shorten the game. Crawford in the corner with 14 on the shot clock. Gets it out to Powell. This is for three. Oh, yes, Josh Powell. I talk about heartbreaking when the opposing team center bombs a three at the end of the shot clock. The two hard misses the free throw. Sanders with a put back and he's fouled. The foul is on Powell. That's his fourth. Amazing. And that's you know, here's the look. He is a he hasn't taken a lot of threes, but 33% on the year for Josh Powell. So, you know, he's he's capable from out there. It's not something you expect. He was uh, six of uh, 15 coming in uh, on the regular season in ACC competition. So even better, 40%. Sanders rattles in the first one. Powell goes out. 
So now Hodge is on the bench with four. Powell's on the bench with four. And Melvin's still hanging tough with three. Well, now it's uh, now it falls on the shoulders of Cam Bennerman and uh, Levi Watkins to try to hold the fourth down. Powell's been the one getting the boards. Melvin now has to get more assertive. Also puts a lot of onus on Casey Sanders to defend Marcus Melvin, who's going to spend a lot of time on the perimeter. Here's Melvin. Dockery with the rebound. Here come the Blue Devils. Dockery with the drive. Air ball. Ball still loose. Jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Duke. Sights and sounds of a championship. See those numbers for Josh Powell playing extremely well. Actually, those are we've got to update those. Right? He's got uh, 16 on the game, six of 11 shooting. So even better than that. But a great chance for Duke to make a run with Hodge and Powell on the bench. It's Betterman, Levi Watkins, Melvin, Scooter, Cheryl, and Crawford on the floor right now for NC State. Penetration. Dockery has fouled before the shot. So Levi Watkins. Well, there's nothing like college basketball, and if you're celebrating the win, do it right. The way you celebrate sure says a lot about you and reflects on your school. So be responsible, take care of yourself, and take care of your friends. And that's a message from Anheuser Busch. Let's take a look at Duke has missed its last 10 shots from the field. The only scoring they have in the last eight are at the free throw line. That's their fourth point during that stretch. But we saw something yesterday. They went 10 minutes in the second half without uh, a field goal. But that for a different reason. They were trying to run clock and spread things out. They're trying to score here tonight and they're not having a good success. Dockery knocks down both of them. So with 10.52 remaining. The lead is back to 12. 55 43 state. The two split the regular season. Here's Betterman. Inside he goes to Scooter Sherrill. Kicks it back out to Watkins. You're missing the scoring right now from Hodge and Powell. But there's a takeaway by Crawford. That's the guy I think you got to lean on right now. Your senior Crawford and uh, junior Melvin, your upper class. But Cheryl comes up short on his attempt. Reddick for three. And here comes Duke. One of the first good scoring opportunities that J.J. Reddick has had in this game, and he drills the three. Now we'll see how State maintains its composure. Trying to hold on and weather the storm with Hodge and Powell sitting on the bench with four. Cheryl loses it. Duhon. Can't defend that. Herb Sindek wants a 30-second timeout. Tim is just too far out. Nobody can get to him. It's a nine-nothing run by Duke. Well, you know, and by definition, NC State. I mean, they are not going to be the, the same ball club with Julius Hodge and Josh Powell on the bench. But those two are coming back into the ball game. Both of them with four fouls. This is a look. This Casey Sanders is in the game for us to be a screener, and he got J.J. Redick off on that first play. Now look at this. I mean, he is a good seven feet behind the three-point line when he rises up for that shot. Blue Devils are on the run, closing the gap, and putting themselves back into this championship. Duke beat State last year in the championship, 91 to 61. It's been a different story here. At the half, State led Duke 36-31. In the first half, four ties, seven lead changes. 
but foul trouble now for NC State has really caused some problems. Now Powell and Heiser he hurts in that. In the last thing you tell these guys understand that you have four fouls and what you have, you, you have to play a little differently right now. There's still nine minutes left in this game. Hodge and Powell now we'll see if they can get back into the flow. Hodge way back by the timeline. Here's Powell. Powell is fouled. He does cause problems in that middle for Duke. Uh, and he, as I, I mentioned earlier, he's been much more aggress aggressive in the second half of the season. He was a little stationary in that offense out front in the, in the middle of the man in their Princeton offense is so critical. He's got to be active. Teams were playing off of Josh Powell, and, uh, you know, he really wasn't that effective. As the season went along, he started to take that jump shot a little bit more. He started to put the ball on the floor, and that's when their offense came together. That was on Reddick. So here's Powell. Cooley sinks the first one. He has 14 points in the second half. And he now has 18 points for the game. Now he's, he's been a monster. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he made the all tournament team the way he's played for NC State this, this, uh, this weekend. So the lead is eight. A great drive. You know, Reddick had only nine points yesterday. He now has 15, and you can see he's feeling it. He's calling for the ball, and he's being assertive. Why? Well, that shows the versatility of his game. Those two long bombs set up that drive. You've obviously got to respect that long shot, and a poor decision right there by Sean Dockery on the reach in. He has three. Back into the ball game, and Dockery goes out. Had a rough shooting night yesterday against North Carolina as well. 33 one and one. You know, we said at the beginning of the game, NC State would have to shoot well at the free throw line. And nothing's changed because they're going to be there a lot down the stretch. Powell gets the roll. Powell is 13 of 17. NC State is 13 of 17, rather. Identical, identical numbers right there at the free throw line. He knocks them both in. 59 51 with 8 25 to play. Terrific basketball game. And that's the way it should be for a championship. Duhon gets the roll. Uh, you know, it's, you know, Duke's doing a smart thing right now. They know NC State has foul trouble. Rather than bailing them out with jump shots, they're really attacking the front of the rim. J.J. Reddick did it on the last possession. Duhon getting inside. That time, Powell really can't be aggressive as, as aggressive as he'd like to be right now. Powell still down. Hit his head on the floor. Reddick kicks it back outside. Reddick loses it. The power at the other end, who was on the floor and it's still holding his head. It's still holding his head. You know, what happened? Powell was down. Duke covered up everybody except for Casey Sanders and uh, a poor ball handling decision that time by J.J. Reddick. Powell, fairly aggressive on Dante Jones. I think he just. This is Hodge. Well, Who'd they call this on? I think Powell just dunked at the middle basket down there. And he was a little shaken up on that play. Called it on Crawford. That's four on Crawford. There's the play. I mean, he really hit the deck hard. He's a little woozy right now. Trying to get back into the play, and all of a sudden he's, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Here's Ewing. Ewing makes the first. And so Daniel Ewing, the 6'3", 170-pound sophomore, 
Crawford is in double figures again. He has 10 as Clifford Crawford sits down with four. So that's three now with four. Hodge, Powell, and, let's, and Crawford. Let's see how this plays out, Tim. Sheldon Williams back in the game. He's got four fouls. Josh Powell has four fouls. Ewing knocks them both down. 7 11 left to play. Duke's offense starting to come alive, and J.J. Redick a big part of that. Eight of his 15 points coming in the second half. A couple of bombs sets up the drive right here. He has been much more aggressive looking for his shot. There you see first half only two of six from the field. A much different story though in the second half. Three of four, two of those from behind the arc. Well, it seems like just moments ago it was 55 to 40 state. They led by 15. That now has been cut to 61 55 and mainly because of that guy Reddick who's been drilling them inside and outside. Right, as you, you touched on yesterday NC State has had trouble keeping leads all year long. See if they can have a little composure over the last seven minutes here to finish this deal. Look for the back door it wasn't there. Good defense by Duke. Here's Melvin with the jumper. Knocks it down. He has 12 points. Got a first team player and uh, struggling through a poor shooting night, but at a critical time, knocks down the jump shot. He was only three of 15 before that. Jones looked for the back door, but it wasn't there. Cheryl penetrates. Here comes Duke. Kick it out to Ewing. He's beyond the arc. And Melvin is fouled by Jones. Poor decision by Dante Jones. That's his fourth foul. All right, let's. We're going to set up a little pool here as to who goes out first with all these four fouls. This is unbelievable. <laughs> well, Mike, you've been in this situation, and, and I know you've had games along the way. You weren't always in foul trouble. You didn't get that many fouls. But when you did have foul four, how did you play? Well, that's. I mean, you, you, you can't be as aggressive, but Tim, the thing that you can't do is make a foul like that. I mean, Dante Jones had no chance of getting that ball back. You've got to turn around and, and go, go back and set up on defense. Closed captioning for ACC basketball is provided by RBC Centura. Building a better bank one customer at a time. You know, if, it's a, if it's end game and you've got to put somebody on the line and you've got to get your fifth foul, so be it. But the, you've got to save your fouls and be smart so that you're ground for those situations. Reddick comes back in. Dockery goes out. Melvin missed the first. He's got one more coming. This is in both. Under six minutes to play. Like body language is changing. It looks like NC State now tired and sluggish. Momentum Duke. Bouncing around now. Three games, three days with a very short bench. Can they finish it? Possession arrow belongs to NC State. Great hustle there by Bennerman. Good defense on Reddit. Really done the little things all game long. He's knocked down a basket or two, but uh, getting on the floor that time, he was the first body down there. Nice defense by Reddit, bodying him up and then getting the turnover. Five thirty-four to play. Five-point game. NC State led at the half by five. Hodge throws it away, trying to get the ball to Powell. That's 13 turnovers for State. And that was an un that's an unforced error right there. Just a, a poor decision to try to make that play. Julius Hodge kind of put his hands over his face after he made that pass. You know, I know Powell is lighting him up inside, but you've got to find a better entry angle. Crowd wanted to walk. Here's Reddick. And they call a foul on Betterman. The 
Everything's getting a little chippy out here now. <laughs> you know, this is great stuff. Five minutes to go in the championship on the line. You mentioned it. There are 23,000 officials here in the stands. Reddick's got 15 points. I think with J.J. Reddick, I mean, so many people have talked about his ability to shoot the basketball, which is unquestioned, but sometimes they overlook what he can do putting the ball on the floor. I mean, you, can, you have both of that, plus you, you add a free throw, a 92% free throw percentage. On top of that, you are a very difficult person to guard. When you hit 80 of your 87 free throws for the year, you can knock him down at the line. It's, when you can remember every single miss, that's, <laughs> you know you're not doing it a lot. Five minutes to play. Championship game. Down the stretch we come with a three-point lead for State. How about that challenge just to shoot by Chris Duhon in front of Julius Hodge? And Hodge knocks it down, and he answers. I wouldn't be surprised if Hodge does the same thing now. Kick it out to Jones. Over Melvin. Hodge with the rebound. Quick jump shot. Hodge says, come on, let's play. But he misses the shot, and the foul is on Betterman. Boy, Hodge had a good look, too. Just couldn't quite turn the corner and get the angle all the way to the rim. Number 13, Cameron Fetterman, that's his third. Dockery only a 61% free throw shooter. 15, John Dockery for two shots. He's hit 25 of his 41 for the year. Both teams in the double bonus from here on out, Tim. And this is that one. Duke looking for its fifth straight tournament title and again no player on this roster for Duke has ever played in a losing ACC tournament game well, you know, he's talked to the coaches before and his doctor knocks that down I think Duke I'd say they want to win the other four but for this team being so young that winning an ACC tournament would be huge for them and be a real momentum builder going into the NCAA tournament First step pulls up and drills the jumper. All right, that's a great decision making right there. JJ Reddick was waiting for Powell to take it all the way to take the charge. He pulled up short and knocked down the jump shot. Under four minutes we go. Penetration by Jones. Yes. That's a much better decision rather than settling for the jump shot like he did in the prior possession. of the foul this would be called against Sheldon Williams if it is that's his fifth he's disqualified so he's the first to go although you have a feeling others will follow yeah, he won't be the last and again doing it in an area where he probably shouldn't he's trying to reach and get the steal 30 feet from the basket that's the pressure that NC State's big people put on you, Tim. They're used to operating away from the basket, where Sheldon Williams probably isn't used to defending out that far. So Williams sits down with nine points. Josh Powell at the line with 24. And gets the roll. Nice soft touch. He's had a great tournament. NC State in the last seven games as a team has shot 83% at the line. Gets the roll in the second one. He has a career high 26 points. Well, here we go, folks. 345 to play. 69 63 State. The 50th annual ACC Tournament Championship. Emotion certainly evident. To this point, it hasn't gotten in the way of concentration. 3.45 remaining. 
69-63, NC State leading Duke. And Mike, here's our deep game summary. Huge advantage for North Carolina State on second chance opportunities as well as on the fast break. And uh, Tim, you know, we, we talked about it. And, uh, 13 turnovers, still not a bad number. And three and 345 left to go here. But NC State has handled the pressure. And uh, Duke foul trouble. Sheldon Williams out of the game. Dante Jones with four. Sean Dockery with three. Julius Hodge has four. Powell has four. Crawford has four. Melvin has three. So State's got some of its own problems. Here's Reddick beyond the arc. Yes. You really want to execute coming out of a timeout and a great screen by Casey Sanders once again gets J.J. Reddick free. It's a three-point game. Crawford with the penetration. Transition at the other end. Dante Jones. One-point game. Talked about it. Duke had not gotten out and gotten any easy baskets, and J.J. Reddick lit the fire, and Dante Jones stoking it. Ball's loose. Hodge has it. Still loose. Tie up. Duke ball. Possession arrow to the Blue Devils. Composure right now, Tim. Composure for NC State. Julius Hodge trying to do too much off the dribble. And that's as demonstrative as you're going to see Herb Sindek, and he wants a timeout. Duke has not led since this game was 15 to 14. They now trail by one with 2.55 left. You're going to see J.J. Redick is going to come off the screen, come all the way around here to get the shot. Casey Sanders setting up shop down low, springs him out. Here's the look. You see eyes ahead. Chris Duhon trying to find a way through, and Dante Jones beating everybody down the floor. Five points in about 15 seconds. NC State had a 15-point lead, but this is not uncommon for the Wolfpack. This has happened time and time again this year, where they've had leads on teams and were unable to close the deal. Uh, fatigue setting in, and there's the. Uh, there are the, the leads that they've had at Duke against Maryland and against, against Wake Forest the last two home games. Well, I can tell you this, and Herb, foul trouble or not, they've got to let it go now. They've got to play aggressively. Yeah, and Herb Sendek trying to give his team a shot of confidence. Cliff Crawford has got a foul on the play. And that's his fifth. He's disqualified. Uh, and that's huge, Tim, because he is their best perimeter defender, and he had been guarding J.J. Redick. This is going to put a lot of pressure on the freshman, Cam Betterman. So Crawford leaves. And Redick goes to the line. This is for the tie. Deadlocked at 69. For the lead. Blue Devils lead. Like a machine, it's like the Iron, <laughs> iron Byron in golf. Uh, NC State, they've got to do it off the pass. They, they, they had too, too much dribbling as the defense swarming. Julius Hodge, I think, trying to do too much in the last couple of possessions. A fourth shot right there. Bodies flying everywhere in that end. Blue Devils by one with the ball and in control. Shot clock at 12. Shot clock at 8. Here's Reddick. Shot clock at five. Knowing how to finish games, Tim, but I say 
This offense runs much better when they share the basketball. That was a great find and a cross court pass by JJ Reddick. Duke by three. 30 second timeout by Herb Sindek. One fifty one remaining in the ball game. as you look at the timeouts remaining. You can see in that prior shot Herb Sindek looking into the eyes of every one of his players trying to give them confidence. What do you tell your team though in this timeout you've just lost a 15 point lead and now you have got 151 left well, in the championship game. Well ideally you know you don't want to have to win a game twice but NC State has put themselves in this position. We talked about it when with the fouls and when with fatigue become a factor. I think Herb Sendek is telling his team right now let's get things out of the offense. Maybe we want to try to explore Josh Powell in the lower post. I thought Julius Hodge has tried to do too much by himself in the last couple of possessions. Both teams shooting two at the free throw line because of the 10 team fouls. Duke has hit nine of its last 10 shots. Wolfpack badly in need of a hoop. And they lose it. They got a small cover on Marcus Melton and away from the basket. Daniel Ewing has the advantage. He picked his pocket. Look at this scoring run. 11 nothing in the last two minutes. One twenty to play. Shot clock at 15. Reddick. Unbelievable. Solid at the free throw line. Uh, can't call him a freshman any longer. The Blue Devils have exploded. 75 69 with 108 to play. 18 second half points for J.J. Reddick. We talked about Cliff Crawford out of the game. Who do you put on him defensively? Right now, I don't know that it matters. 25 points for Reddick. It's the eighth time this year he's gone over 20. Although I don't think any are bigger than that three he just hit. You know, Tim, and, and Skip Frosser talks about Duke. He goes tick, 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 tick. It's like a time bomb. He's just waiting to go off. And it's a, it's been dramatic, the turnaround in this game. And the NC State was cruising along with a 13-point lead. And uh, it evaporated so quickly, and then uh, J.J. Reddick, Daniel Ewing were a big part of it, and then Duke really turned up things defensively. Where's Josh Powell? He's been silent the last several minutes. They've got to find him. Here's Hodge. Air ball. Everybody was calling for a timeout, but nobody had control of the ball. Come on. Come on. 20 on the shot clock. State still has it. They need a rugby throw in instead of <laughs> after that play. Great feeling in this arena. It's electric. I tell you, it's brought back a lot of memories for me, Tim. It's been an honor to be here. No, no, no. And there's the foul call on Chris Duhon. That's three on Duhon, but that's a moot point with 50.9 seconds left. Let's see after this if NC State comes with full court pressure. Hodge has had a strong game to 11 points and 12 rebounds, but only 3 of 13 from the field. He makes the first to cut the lead to 5. Two possession game regardless of what Hodge does here. the all time breaks. David Thompson trying to get power out of that 74 championship ring. Well this is the 20th anniversary 
of the 83 national title team from NC State. They were the number four seed that year, and they called that tournament win a miracle. Can they get another one here? Only difference to that that team had to win that game to advance to the NCAA tournament. Uh, this team not uh, far off from this one. No, no, not this not one all. should get in. Yeah, they're, uh, I'd say they're a lock. Oh, Scooter Shell had it, then lost it. Seventy five seventy one forty nine seconds left. This foul is on Scooter Cheryl. And that's a nice job. You know you look at the three receivers that he had in uh, Jones Reddick Daniel Ewing Reddick Ewing automatic from the free throw line. Dante Jones not bad at 74 percent but he's your best option. But Duke as a team has been unconscious every line he's had. 15 for 18. That's not always been the case. It's, it's been a bit of an Achilles heel for this team over the last few years. They have not been so solid last year. Year. Absolutely. Like butter. Horvath goes out. Casey Sanders comes in. Six point lead for Duke. State's got to hurry. The two in the timeout. Yeah, I think NC right now Duke is going to stay at home on the three point shooters at Marcus Melvin and Scooter Sherrill. They're going to give up two points NC inside. NC State out of timeouts. <laughs> which is, one, it, look, is it too early? Which way? Where do you have Dewey wins too? Is, is it too <laughs> early? <laughs> <laughs> However, I must tell you that they also have this one. Why the news in a record? How about that? They're on top of it, aren't they? <laughs> well, what do you think? 77, 73, 39.2 seconds left. Well, I, I, you know, the fact really that Duke has been knocking down their free throws has really been a big factor over the last couple of minutes. And, uh, you know, NC State, again, it's, it's just been. Herb Sendak trying to uh, trying to rally his team after losing a double digit lead. Take you back to the window of time. Everett Case won the first three tournament titles and another in 1959 before retiring in 65. Former NC State player Vic Bubis was in the ACC tournament finals in eight of his 10 years at Duke, winning four of those. Coach K has won the last four championships. He won his first in 1986 and again in 1988 and 1992. And Dean Smith, he won 13 titles in his 36 years at North Carolina. He won three in a row from 1967 to 1969. He won his last championship in 1997, which was his last year as the Tar Heels head coach. Herb Sendek looking for his first, and there's Coach, or Coach K rather, in his third final. The only coach to come out of the play-in game and reach the finals. Here's Reddick from the breakaway. And he's fouled by Bennerman. Duke 85% from the line in the second half. 35 seconds left. Four-point game. You know what, Tim, and again. And this is they make each other better. You know, JJ Reddick can have this game because Daniel Ewing's out on the floor. He comes, Ewing's come in, he's, he's averaged 25 and a half points over the last two. You've got to pay attention to him. All of a sudden that gives JJ Reddick a little light outside. It's just such a deadly combination and uh, a luxury for Mike Krzyzewski to be able to put two players of that caliber that can shoot the ball from long range out on the floor. You know, it was no secret when this game started that NC State couldn't, have foul, couldn't afford foul trouble, especially with Hodge, Powell, and Melvin. And they got all three in foul trouble, and over the last eight or nine minutes, certainly, it has changed the play for the Wolfpack. 30 seconds left. Hodge needing a bucket banner, and he's fouled. Foul on Chris Duhon. Boy, it was like a 
It was like a, a seismic event when uh, Daniel or when JJ Reddick missed the free throw. You heard the murmur go through the building. Well, and and because if he if Hodge knocks these two down, it's one possession game. A lot of ifs. He's got to knock these down, make a stop, and it's a one possession game. There's the first one. It's also a big play that time for Casey Sanders to come over and get that block on on the play, and that could have been a three point opportunity. Classman on the first team all ACC makes them both. 78 75. Now State needs a stop. Will Roach comes into the game for Hodge. Wow, he takes a timeout. I didn't know if it was going to be a five second or the timeout call. <laughs> Will Roach has been sitting over there for 30 mi 39 minutes and 30 seconds to have to come in and deny a, the, a man the ball in there. He did a nice job of getting in front of Ewing. Timeouts remaining. Duke has won. Both teams in the double bonus. And it's 78 75 with 27.3 seconds left. Our Pepsi players of the game, Josh Powell, sensational with 26 points, 8 of 13 from the field, and JJ Reddick, who brought the Duke Blue Devils back into this game, 26 points, 5 of 10. Well, and both of those players doing most of their work in the second half of this ball game makes it even more impressive. Right now, it's, it's two things got to happen. The guy taking the ball out of bounds, a lot of poise. You have to keep that five-second count going in your head. And then outlets. Come to the basketball. Make yourself available. Horvath <laughs> gets it in. Ahead they go to you. He missed the free throw. Horvath with the putback. Missed the layup and hurt his shoulder. Trying to game a hand. How about Nick Horvath following up on that play, not conceding the layup? Melvin knocks down two. 13.8 seconds left. Will Roach with the foul, and Reddick goes to the line, and Reddick again will tell you is a 92% free throw shooter. Well, there's the risky run. I mean, everybody's concentrating. On getting the ball and denying it in, and then a nice throw over the top to Horvath. It's again, it's never concede a layup like that. A smart play by Horvath to follow after and make sure everything is cleaned up. Well, Renick, seven of eight at the line today. And if he makes the first one, it's a two possession game. And the door closing on NC State. Hodge comes back in. Powell comes back in. Venerman's in the game. Reddick makes them both. State needs a quick three. Here's Hodge. Hodge. Marcus Melvin over the back. That should do it. That's four on Melvin, but. Five seconds left, you're right. It's over. What a second half, Mike, by J.J. Reddick. And I have never seen Mike Krzyzewski this, de this demonstrative on the sidelines, and it has been J.J. Reddick in the second half, not playing like a freshman. Hitting from way out and then showing the ability to put the ball on the floor as well. He's been rock solid from the free throw line. Sometimes he just shoots too far away. You can't get to him. 21 points for Reddick in the second half. Just for an exclamation point, he knocks it down. Why and who's the MVP to split the trophy? Ewing and Reddick. Well, Ewing certainly up to this point, and today Reddick, you're right. Ewing 51 points in the first two wins of the tournament. Jason Williams, the last freshman, I think, to win a tournament MVP. Powell goes out. 
Melvin goes out. Fine effort by Josh Powell. What an entertaining championship this has been as Reddick knocks down the second. J.J. Reddick holding up five fingers for five consecutive championships. And for Mike Krzyzewski, ACC tournament champion number eight. That's it. Duke 84, NC State 77.